Hey, friends and family of the internet, watchers on the wall, welcome back, folks. We have to go deeper with the 100 plus cremated human remains found in the desert, not very far from Los Angeles. It was actually found in a little town called Searchlight. Now, there's been a lot of interesting things happening in Searchlight, Nevada in the past, oh, eight or nine years. One of them is a military development company has been working on their drones. And I just got curious, you know, we were all just chatting during my last video when I introduced all of these human remains found in the desert of Nevada on federal lands in Searchlight, the small mining ghost town in Nevada in the desert, that the one thing they found were zip ties. Now, some people said, well, Sam, that could have been because, you know, the bags that the human remains were in, the, the cremated remains were in, they're zip tied at the top. That's, that's a great point. But remember, they did not mention the plastic bags themselves. If you're taking human remains out to the desert, right? You're going to take human remains out to the desert. You have urns in there. You've got a plastic bag and then you've got a zip tie and you want to dump human remains, you cut the zip tie, you dump the bag out. If you take the bag, wouldn't you take the zip tie? I'm just asking, if you don't want to leave evidence, you would take the urn, the zip tie and the bag. So nothing can be traced back to you, correct? I'm just asking. I mentioned that I really felt like maybe this was tied to human trafficking in some way. So I did a little research and what I'm fixing to tell you guys is going to blow your minds. Nevada is one in the top 10 states for human trafficking inside of the United States, especially Las Vegas. That doesn't shock anybody, does it? So welcome back to Starkey Farmstead. My name is Samantha. Please hit the like button, drop over to comments, tell me who you are, where you're watching from. Someone told me they were watching from Moors earlier. Well, welcome all you Martians and everybody else who wants to find out what is going on in the deserts of our beautiful country. Now, I just mentioned to you that Searchlight had a contractor come and was developing his drones there. Did you know that a DEW, a directed energy weapon, can be fit, can be attached to, fitted on a drone? Yes, direct, directed energy weapons, known as DUs, can be fitted onto drones. And this is an active area of development for military and defense applications. There are two primary types of dues that are being developed for drone application. High energy lasers, also known as HAIL. Your skin should have goosebumps and be crawling just a little bit. And a high power microwave, known as HPM. However, the size and power requirements of the weapons mean they are typically typically mounted on larger military grade unmanned aircraft rather than small commercial drones. So the HAIL laser is a focused laser beam to disable or destroy a target. Some laser do systems can be mounted on armored vehicles, trucks, and helicopters. Japan's military is working on a smaller laser do that can be lifted onto smaller vehicles. Then you have the high power microwave which is basically the energy to fry or disrupt electronics of a target. These are used to effectively neutralize drone swarms as the energy beam is wider and can target multiple drones and our target simultaneously. Now, having said that and introduced you to this, now you guys know why YouTube doesn't pay me. YouTube does not pay Samantha because supposedly my content, mine, where there's no cussing, nudity, or untruths is dangerous for some fragile, not people. Anyway, um, if you'd like to support us, please look in the top of comments. My husband does have a brain aneurysm, and I am trying to be a Proverbs wife and use all of my gifts and talents to increase the money so that when he has surgery, we will not lose everything, right? June 14th, 2024, fact sheet, directed energy weapons, okay? So a do is used 
It is what uses electromagnetic energy to engage and neutralize enemy threats and assets. They encompass high energy lasers and high power electromagnetic systems, including millimeter wave and microwave weapons. Okay, so how do they work? They operate within a specific range of electromagnetic spectrums. The spectrum includes light char characterized by wavelength. Different wavelengths impart unique properties affecting penetration capabilities through various materials such as metal or biological tissue. So don't tell me they can't use them on humans because they most likely are doing that, right? So I'm showing you this because we were all talking about why in the world where there's zip ties and cremated remains, but there are no urns and there are no plastic bags. There's just zip ties and then a pile of human ash and bone. Well, let's talk about this. So there was a developer from an El Dorado facility bring searchlight airstrip into testing circles. So what do we have here? This was in 2017. This once abandoned subdivision off the side of US Highway 95 is tucked out of view, but there isn't much to see anyway. Just some houseless streets next to a mile long airstrip. Okay. But Jonathan Daniels, if he has his way, will be buzzing with drones. So Daniels, the founder of Henderson-based Praxis Aerospace Concepts International, recently leased about an acre of land at the Searchlight Airport for his drone testing business. His plans to start working from temporary trailers, the site has water and power hookups, by mid-May or eventually build a permanent facility. All right. Um, it says, at first glance, Searchlight seems like an unlikely place for aviation technology, it's 40 miles south of Boulder City, outside of Los Angeles. There's not much there, right? Um, government officials and industry executives are trying to make Nevada a major hub of drone development and testing. <laughs> so there it is, right? He is a 45, well, was a 45-year-old former helicopter uh, pilot and infantryman. He founded Praxis in 2011. The company mostly provides testing, training, and other service for owners and operators of drones and robotics. Right? He really wants a 50-acre property designed to include 15,000 square foot terminal and 860,000 square feet of warehouse, hangar, training, office, research, and development. Okay. I just want to share that with y'all. All this in the same area that all those little bits of human bodies, right? So this right here is like a video of his drones flying in the air. Is that we have uh, some operations in the El Dorado Valley that we're now going to be able to connect to. And what that will do is that will give us an immediate uh, 35 mile corridor from here all the way up to uh, Railroad Pass and back. Uh, to do unmanned aircraft testing. We've had startups, we've had universities, we've recently announced partnership with uh, federal agencies, uh, as well as original equipment manufacturers and service providers themselves who just need a place to go fly and, and test out what they're doing. So it's not a test so much of what the equipment is capable of, it's how they're gonna use the equipment. If I could have designed a turnkey instant uh, airport for unmanned aircraft, it would look just like that. Really? Because it's got it's got the water, it's got the power, it's got the paving, it's got the subdivisions, it has a fantastic runway, uh, it's in perfect airspace, there's no corridors over us, we're not interfering with anybody, and it's at the southern end of the valley that we had picked, and that we've, we've really been spending about five years putting together uh, to do all the exact same things, right? Because we can go fly on the solar plants, we can fly on the power lines, we can do all the things that people want to be able to do, as well as the wildlife conservation and, you know, the industry behind what drones really are capable of and so it's not a it's not a come out here and pay to go fly right just like an airport you don't have to pay every time you take off land the airport you pay for the services on the airport if you use them so part of what we're trying to do is gather up people who are entering the industry and kind of help them uh, not be gray market and, and black marketeers and, and make mistakes that hurt the industry here's a place of you know a safe place you want to learn how to fly you want to do this right come out here you can fly you can do the things you want to try you have people you can lean on um, but it's not just hobbyists. I want to show you that. I also want to show you guys this real fast. Nevada missing persons. First thing I want you to notice is the dates. All these people are missing and then their ages. 
16 August, 16 August, 15 August, 14 um, June, 14 August, 15 August, 17 July, 16 May, it's all 2025, 14 July, 16 July, 18 July, look at their ages, 16. Look at this, folks. All these kids missing around Las Vegas. Searchlight is not very far from Las Vegas. Look at these children. This one's one of the oldest ones from 2022. Here's another. So these must be brothers, Jonathan and Christian. You know, and wasn't Burning Man in this area? I'm just asking. I really don't know. Somebody drop it in comments. Let me know. So I needed to share that with you guys. Now let's go back to this. Right? They're saying 70 here, but originally I heard 100 piles of cremated human remains mysteriously appeared on the side of a dirt road just out of Las Vegas. Around 70 piles of cremated human remains were discovered along a dirt road near the rural community of Searchlight, about an hour south of the city. The discovery was made earlier this week when someone stumbled upon the scene and shared a photo with local news. Officials from the Bureau of Land Management have confirmed that the piles are indeed human cremated remains, which are actually pulverized bone left after cremation. While Nevada law allows people to scatter ashes on public land, Okay, so I'm going to say this. You guys, you guys know I'm not going to curb my mouth. I saw what happens when do is used as a weapon. Okay, I saw it with my own eyes in Maui. Right? Could a do weapon attached to a drone? I'm just saying. I've been responsible for this, knowing the human trafficking that happens in this area knowing how many children are missing in those age range in this area. It zip ties, no bags, no urns. Just one little piece of bottle was found. They called it an urn, but that could have been a glass bottle broken in the desert. Who knows? I would have expected a hundred urns, right? What if people walked out there, zip tied, and then they tested a drone? Because if it is, if the dew weapon is set for biological material, it's not going to melt plastic. That wavelength is different. It's not going to. I have videos that show you that if they're using a blue laser, it will not burn blue. Okay. God, this sounds like it could have been out of like some kind of alien invasion movie. You know, meh, 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 but now you just got piles of dust. But they can do it. And they test. I did a video the other day of them finally admitting to what they did to all those people in Missouri, you know, er er uh, eradicated oatmeal or whatever. It's like radiated oatmeal, the fog that rolled in on children playing in the ghettos of Missouri. Yeah, I did that video not long ago. Don't forget Operation Sea Spray, Operation Popeye, MK Ultra. One day, maybe if the earth is still here and Jesus has not returned, our children will be looking at release records called Operation Human Trafficking or Operation Human Shield or Operation Drone or something like that. And all of this will be answered then. So the federal government, because it's on federal land, has to investigate. But will they really? Are they going to DNA test it? Is there anything left to DNA test? Can they tell if it was male and female? What ethnicity? The age? It's terrifying. But I wanted to share all these little bits that I found. And I'm going to let you guys just run with it. Everything's in description. 
I hope you guys appreciate, appreciate me reading your comments, looking at what you said and going to do further evidence. If you do appreciate that, please pray about rowing in our boat. If everybody would send a dollar, you guys could legitimately hear me. Please, please help me quit saying, please send a dollar. <laughs> but without you two paying me and my husband as sick as he is, I really genuinely need you guys help so that I can continue this. And by the way, if you've not done so, you can find our book just about everywhere. Walden's, Walmart, Barnes & Noble, eBay, Amazon, and Kindle, Growing Under a Poison Sky. I love you guys so much. Be blessed. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you found.